Come on, Gillard. Yeah. Come on stage. Round of applause for Gillard, everybody. Hi there. Hi. So, Gillard, um, I understand you would like to crowdsource some advice about a specific life oh, yeah. issue that you're facing right now. Yeah, yeah, it's a big one. So my wife and I are looking to adopt a dog, mm -hmm. and the problem much, is I much can't. Much to the dismay of your parents. My parents, which they really want me to have a child, but uh, I want a dog. I want to do it uh, just to spite them. And Understandable. Yeah. <laughs> And unfortunately, I can't live with dog hair in my, in my house. Wait, you're allergic to dogs? Oh, yeah. But you want to adopt a dog? I want to adopt a dog, but I can't live with the hair, unfortunately. Yes. Oh. So, since we have a lot of people here, uh, and we have a hashtag we can all use, uh, how about we gather suggestions for hypoallergenic dogs uh, using the GoForConEU Twitter hashtag? Great. So tweet if you've got any ideas for Gilad to help find that dog, the one that is not going to make him, you know, pass away from being allergic <laughs> to dogs. And in the meantime, um, I'm going to see if I can learn something about package management in Go. Thanks so much, Gilad. Give it up for Gilad, Thank everyone. You all. Thank you very much. Uh, hi, everyone. I, I just wanted to know that I don't take it for granted that everyone here are here because... I guess that some of you maybe were supposed to be on a plane, on a train back home, because we're right now with the end of the conference. But if you're here, I don't take it for granted, and thank you very much. So my name is Gilad Weiss. I am Rookout Software Architect. And I really love to dig into places where people usually do take for granted. Like, think of the last time you thought about your Go Mud or Go Sum. What's going on there? So let's get into that. I want to ask you, with raising your hands, whose first language that they ever worked with was Go? The exact, uh, the exact answer that I expected. Uh, for those of you who are watching, uh, no one raised their hands. So same as I, I did not uh, start with Go. I started with JavaScript, with, with Node.js. So when I started to work with Go, I saw these two files. I, I was looking for the files that will connect me to, to my special place. And the files were package.json and package.lock. For those of you who aren't sure, package.json is the root of your model, of your JavaScript model, and it has all your dependencies. The package.lock is the exact tree of all your dependencies and some dependencies of this module. So I was looking at these two files. OK, I saw go mod. I said to myself, OK, I can see that's pretty. That's pretty possible to handle with. I saw the names of uh, repositories. I saw versions, OK, names and versions. And then I saw this, what the hell is that? I see, I see names, I see versions, I see uh, a bit of mambo jumbo. But that does look like a tree. So yeah, I was looking for something. It, so OK, I thought to myself, then that that's not package lock. Or maybe it is, I don't know. So I'll look for something else that will help me understand how the, the management works, the, all the dependency management work. And the next part was to grab my own dependency. I used go get. I used go get, and there I saw a repository name. Okay, and I said to myself, OK, something is, is a bit off. I usually expect when, when, you, you, when we use Python on a node, we use package names. But here we use a repository. So it popped two questions into my mind. The first question was, do we have a package manager in Go? Is there something like standard that everybody puts their uh, modules at? And the second question was, is there any, is, 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 it, is it that simple? Do I just git, git clone the repository? So let's talk about the first question. We know the node has NPM, Python has uh, PyPy, there's the gem Ruby and Ruby. And so Go doesn't have a thing. And the unfortunate answer, and the fortunate answer is no. There is no any um, standard package manager that saves all the, rep, all the modules. And I think that's a very good thing, because the Go language is entwined with the open source community. The language is open source, and all the modules are like 99% open source. 
because you as developers use, and I'm gonna say GitHub or Git, but that's a knowledge, that's a general term for v VSCs, the virtual control systems. So you use them every day, and the goal Andrew is, is like, okay, no problem. If you use them every day, you're gonna use the Go models every day. There's no need for any uh, external package manager for you to use. You would just get them from the just from the repositories. I think that's a very good idea. But when people talk about models, and I said it uh, more, than, more than a couple of times, they talk about Go modules. And I'm not going to dwell on that uh, very much. Why? Because you have like a bunch of uh, articles online that will talk about uh, modules and what was before them and what came after them. And so we're just going to skip that pretty through, especially uh, the time was, but was, but what was before that. So just in a... Just in a quick reminder, if we're going to ask an old dinosaur like uh, Mr. Kennedy over here, how was it before Go models? He'll say, oh, at that time, GoPath was king. Everything, all of your projects in your, in your computer had to be in the same path because all your dependencies were in the same path. If one project had to use a dependency at a certain version and another project had to use the same dependency at a different version, which let's say the same major, same major version, but not the same minor, well, screw you. You couldn't use uh, these, two, uh, these two dependencies. If you did want to use any specific branch uh, dependency, you had to use vendors and vendoring. I don't know how many people, used, uh, how many people uh, here used uh, vendoring. Yeah. Yeah, you'd have to download the whole, your, your whole dependency tree into your uh, local um, repository, into your module. You didn't have a modules. And it was very, very, very large. Just think about the times, just dealing with that with your friends, uh, your teammates, uh, using Git would be insane. Thankfully, we have Go modules, which are way more simpler. You have Go mod at the base of, of your project, and you, you would have you must use tags. Now, that's another indication of using modern, modern solutions. Because I'm, we're talking about anything that Git uses. It uses commits, it uses branches, it uses tags. That that's the way you go get stuff. But uh, that's not, it, it still has its own uh, disadvantages. Uh, the main disadvantages I, I know that we had to practice in Rookout is what happens if you want all of your subdependencies to use a certain version of a subdependency? Well, you, use, you had to use replace. You still have to use that. And sometimes it becomes hell in your Go mode. Uh, yeah, locking is not uh, the best part of, uh, of modules, and you can't have uh, test or development specific um, dependencies. And if, you if, you, if any of you maintain a public uh, Go model, you might know, if, and you can see that a lot on Reddit, that people uh, complain about how, how it works when you need to maintain certain uh, major versions. You need to sometimes change the name of your, uh, of your module. But that's, uh, that's OK. They just uh, go models. And I want to now to move to my second question. So what is go get? And my question was, is go get? just git clone? And the answer is, is quite complicated. Because yes, it is just a git clone. What you see is what you get. But before that, there are, kind of, there are, the, there are a couple of steps that are taken. And these are, these are the important steps that I think we can really learn from. So I want to digest with you a simple go get. I use the dash x uh, parameter just to see how go get works. And the first thing we see that it asks proxy.golang.org for my module. What? I just I thought they would just go into straight to the repository. So the answer is no. It looks for a proxy server. Go is uh, an environment variable. The go the go build tool is uh, environment variable very very. Uh, affected by it. So it asks, go, go proxy. Where, where are my, my proxy servers? And the first one you see is the default one, is proxy.org.go. 
And what is a repository server? So a repository, a repository server is just a protocol that's, that's only that is in the, with a name that is pretty self-explanatory. It just stands between you, the developer, your CI, and the repository that you're asking. The, uh, like I said, it's just a protocol, so anyone can implement it. The main implementation is proxy.golang.org. You probably don't know about it, but you do know about its front-end uh, counterpart, which is package pkg.golang.dev, which is the way where you would see all of the repositories. Some people think that this is the package manager, but no. What everything, all the things that proxy.golang.org does, it just, it just caches all of your requests to the repositories, saves it uh, in its state, and it has a, just a bit of uh, this and that it picks from the repository, the readme, and everything that you might expect to see in the front end for, for, their, for their site. OK, so you might ask me, uh, OK, who cares? Because that's pretty for the, this is pretty sounds like pretty internal for Go Go standards, but we're gonna get to that later. How will that kind of protocol will serve us? So let's go to the next step. The next step is the checksum step. We want to make sure that the version that I that I just downloaded is the same version that everyone has in that specific version. That's the, say that's remodeled in that version. And that is very important because we need to know that this is the same version at all times. And this is where GoSum comes to, hand, comes to be helpful. What we do is just, OK, we download it. And we cache two things. We cache the Go mod and we cache the whole content. We check with GoSum. Hey, is that, is that here? Is that here with you, GoSum? If it is, it means that, yes, we do already downloaded that, that that model, and if it's there, let's compare the uh, let's compare the hashes. If it is the same, okay, no mo no one tampered with uh, with the version that I'm expecting. If it is, it will tell you someone did uh, play around with that with that uh, module. And if it doesn't uh, find it in the GoSum, it will find it. It will check the um, public checksum of. Go models, which is sum.golang.go.org, uh, I mean, where everything is there, where you will see every public uh, model uh, with its checksum over there, which is very helpful for everyone to for the first download. Okay, uh, I think this is it's kind of it's kind of useful. Why? Because we need our module to serve us well, and we need it not to. To, sh to show anything that we wouldn't expect. And unfortunately, in the last f uh, few months, we saw that this entwining of uh, certain languages with the open, open source community has misled us, because we're putting all of our eggs in the open source basket, and it might not, be, uh, it must, it might not serve us well. So. Some companies said, OK, we don't want uh, to use the open source uh, code the whole time. We want to control all the code with, that we use. Now, if you ask uh, friends or yourself or at, at previous or, or your current workplaces, how do you deal with internal uh, libraries? They all usually use um, internal package managers and internal uh, package.json, uh, package uh, npm, and internal pypy. So this is where the proxy server can come to handy and be in service as an internal package manager. So we have the, uh, the proxy server, the, the protocol, and we want to implement it as, as it saves certain modules in its storage so for it to be accessible into your internal organization. Thankfully, uh, the Athens project uh, has come to save us. This is the perfect solution for uh, any organization that wants to save its own dependencies, uh, especially for air-gapped organization. If you don't have any access to the outer internet, you might, you might find the Athens project very, very helpful. You would just... Uh, 
make it go up and running locally. Grab, grab all your needed um, Go models, install them in your organization, and that's it. You're good to go. So you must be asking, OK, that's like 1% of the cases. What about the 99%? So this is where we need to know about uh, proxy servers so we can use private repos, which is way, way more common. Because if you have a bunch of teams, and all of them want to use uh, a Teams a Go model, want it to be used uh, more widely. So how do we use private repositories if we know that it first asks the every Go get, asks the, the, the public proxy uh, to, grab my, uh, to grab my Go models? And all we need to do is just tell it, don't do that. All you need to do is first tell it not to use the public proxy and not to use the public SAMDB, which in those cases, you will be able to use the private repository of your organization, which will be used for all of your uh, teammates easily. So uh, that's it. And uh, thank you very much. I hope you, you understood everything I said. <laughs>